So hello everyone, hope all of you are doing well. So Dr. Nasir here with an interesting session, opportunistic infections in HIV. As I got the same request from many students to conduct this session, sir, we are here conducting this session. Sir, what do you mean by opportunistic infections? As we know, opportunistic infections are nothing but the infections in immunocompromised condition. And immunocompromised condition is nothing but a condition with low immunity. Right? And HIV disease is a disease that is caused by HIV virus. And HIV virus is a virus that infects CD4 cells. As it infects CD4 cells, CD4 cells will get damaged. As CD4 cells will get damaged, CD4 count goes down. As CD4 count goes down, immunity goes down. Because CD4 cells are the very important cells involved in the immunity. And that's why HIV is an immunocompromised state. And that's why any infection in a HIV patient we consider as an opportunistic infection as HIV is an immunocompromised state. Right? With this small introduction to opportunistic infections, let's start with this session. Right, opportunistic infections related to CD4 count. Sir, before starting this session, one thing you need to keep in your mind, what is that? Sir, usually opportunistic infections are seen when CD4 count falls below 500. Right, so with that, our cutoff point is 500. CD4 count less than 500. Because if CD4 count is more than 500, usually opportunistic infections are not seen. Sir, when CD4 count falls below 500, there are many opportunistic infections that can occur. But important ones which we need to remember for entrance examinations are sir, pulmonary tuberculosis. Right? Pulmonary tuberculosis followed by oral candidiasis. Sir, pulmonary tuberculosis and oral candidiasis. Two important opportunistic infections. Right, which we see when CD4 count falls below 500. Apart from this, sir, followed by oral candidiasis, bacterial pneumonia, and we know the most common bacteria causing pneumonia is pneumococcus. Therefore, sir, pneumococcal pneumonia, that is bacterial pneumonia, followed by herpes zoster, which is also known as shingles. Herpes zoster, which is also known as shingles. And we all know that herpes zoster or shingles is nothing but a reactivation infection of varicella zoster virus. Right, varicella zoster virus. Apart from these infections, a very important thing that we can see when CD4 count falls below 500 is malignancies. Sir, malignancies which are seen in HIV. We know that many malignancies we see in HIV, sir. But important malignancy, right? Important malignancy. And the most common malignancy, what we see is Kaposi sarcoma. Right? Those are also seen when CD4 count falls below 500. So these are the five important manifestations uh, 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 Manifestations you need to remember when CD4 count falls below 500. There are many. I agree there are many, but these are the five important which you have to remember for sure for entrance examination. So now if you come to CD4 count falls below 200. Sir, when it falls below 200, the very important clinical manifestation is parasitic diarrhea. Right. Parasitic diarrhea. So, which parasites causes diarrhea in HIV patient? We know that acid fast protozoa, that is cryptosporidium, cyclospora, and isospora. These are the three which causes diarrhea in opportunistic condition, that is in HIV patient. Among these three, the most common is cryptosporidium. Right? And the infection gastroenteritis or diarrhea caused by cryptosporidium is cryptosporidiosis. Cryptosporidiasis. So this is the most important. Otherwise, cyclosporidiasis and cystoisosporiasis also seen, but most common is cryptosporidiasis, parasitic diarrhea. So apart from parasitic diarrhea, we also see pneumocystic pneumonia. Right? Pneumocystic pneumonia. So very, very important. Pneumocystic pneumonia. So these are the two important infections we see when CD4 count falls below 200. But if it go, if CD4 count falls, still falls further to less than 100 to less than 100 then the very important one what we see here he is so toxoplasmosis toxoplasmosis and one more disease sir histoplasmosis toxoplasmosis and histoplasmosis so these are the two important infections we see when cd4 count falls below 100 up to 50 if it falls further below 50 Below 50, sir, very important clinical manifestation. What we see here is MAC. Sir, what is MAC? Mycobacterium avium and Mycobacterium intracellulare complex. Two Mycobacter together as a complex, right? Which are atypical Mycobacteria or non-tuberculous Mycobacteria. Along with MAC, sir, we need to remember two more Cs. Sir, what do you mean with along with? What do you mean by that? Along with MAC, we need to remember two more Cs. 
the two more Cs are one is fungus, one is virus. The fungus is Cryptococcus. One is fungus, the fungus is Cryptococcus, and one is virus, the virus is Cytomegalovirus. So these are the important opportunistic infections. Once again, I'm telling you there are many other opportunistic infections we see in HIV, but these are the important ones which we have to remember. Sir, once we know which are the important ones, we have to remember with respect to CD4 count. Now coming to the next point, sir, why? students they get confused why there is a confusion among students so there is a confusion among students because of one thing why because if you talk about the first disease tuberculosis which is the most common opportunistic opportunistic infection in hiv in india and also in the entire world tuberculosis so tuberculosis most commonly involves lung we call it as pulmonary tuberculosis but we know it can involve all other sites that is extra pulmonary tuberculosis the extra pulmonary tuberculosis is associated when CD4 count falls below 200, right? Extra pulmonary tuberculosis is seen when CD4 count falls below 200. And now, if you take the second disease, candidiasis, the candidiasis mainly involves skin and mucous membrane. Mucous membrane may serve oral candidiasis, vaginal candidiasis, then esophageal candidiasis. These are the important mucosal candidiasis. So all types of candida candidiasis are associated when CD4 count falls below 500. But the severe form of cancer candidiasis, that is esophageal candidiasis we see when CD4 count falls below 100. But esophageal candidiasis, that is considered as a severe form of candidiasis, is seen when CD4 count falls below 100. Now, if you come to the parasitic diarrhea, that is cryptosporidiasis. The cryptosporidium, which is acid fast protozoa, that mainly involves intestine causing diarrhea, causing a disease, gastroenteritis, associated with CD4 count, falls below 200. But if you talk about severe form of cryptosporidium infection, the severe cryptosporidiosis, severe cryptosporidiosis, the severe cryptosporidiosis means what? Sir, involving extra intestinal manifestations, manifestations other than intestine, severe form of cryptosporidiosis. We see when CD4 count falls below 100. Similarly, sir, if you talk about toxoplasmosis, the next disease, right? If you talk about toxoplasmosis here, sir, toxoplasmosis is seen when CD4 count falls below 100, but severe form of toxoplasmosis. Right. Severe form of toxoplasmosis is seen when CD4 count falls below 50. Because the same disease right, comes in two to different places because of their severity, sir, we get confused. And I have shown you here why we get confused. And I'm telling you, you should not get confused. Now, if you ask me, sir, how we can't get confused? Because we know this is confusing. Even if you read more number of times, this is the place where you get confused because the same disease comes in two, two places. So that's why what I'm trying to tell you is the second part, what we have discussed. What, where I have shown why we get confused, what I have written in black color, no need to remember. So don't remember the things what we have written in black color. If you try to remember those, then you will get confused. Right? Stick to the important things what we need to remember. So now we know which are the important opportunistic infections to remember. Second, we know how we get confused and hope you will not get confused now. And for that, you should not remember those things. And the third thing is how to remember. That is an important point. How to remember? I will show you one simple technique and I will show you how I remember also. So the simple technique is first consider, right? The first one that is less than 500 and less than 50. These two. If you consider less than 500, less than 50, see what type of infections you see. The bacterial infection and fungal infection. And a bacterial infection and a viral infection. Sir, bacteria and fungus, bacteria and virus, less than 500. Similarly, if you see less than 50, sir, MAC is a bacteria, cryptococcus is a fungus, bacteria and fungus, MAC is a bacteria, cytomegalovirus is a virus. So, less than 500, less than 50. See, 5, 5, there is a similarity. Then there is a similarity in organisms also. Bacteria and fungus, bacteria and virus, bacteria and fungus, bacteria and virus. Sir, which bacteria, fungus, which bacteria, virus, sir, easy to remember, less than 500, pulmonary tuberculosis and oral candidiasis, pneumococcal pneumonia and herpes zoster, and one malignancy, Kaposi sarcoma. Sir, which bacteria and which fungus in less than 50, easy to remember, MAC and 2Cs. MAC is a bacteria, 2Cs are fungus and a virus, cryptococcus and cytomegalovirus, easy to remember. Sir, moving on to the next, which are the next two, sir, the middle two, less than 200, less than 100. Sir, here a parasite and a fungus. 
parasite and a fungus a parasite and a fungus see here parasitic diarrhea cryptosporidium pneumocystic pneumonia pneumocystis is a fungus fungal pneumonia the toxoplasmosis is a parasite and histoplasma a fungus and easy to remember see pp parasitic and pneumocystis parasitic diarrhea pneumocystis pneumonia pp easy to remember here sir there are two these two diseases are rhyming in nature toxoplasmosis and histoplasmosis are very easy to remember so this is how easily we can remember hope right you feel that opportunistic infection topic is simplified and hope you have got a confidence now that yes sir we can remember and hope you will do well in the exams with that with that guys all the best prepare well do well all the best for your exams thank you